Dear members of JCI Finland and members from all around the world, my name is Kevin Hinn, JCI Secretary General, talking to you from Monaco. And uh, I want to say a few words to you on several topics in the context of this online training session. Now, the first point I want to raise is about uh, the activities of JCI headquarters in the first quarter of 2020, since uh, our new management has taken over. And I will also say a few words about how we as JCI members can maintain our relevance in these times of crisis and how we can rebuild the image of our organisation over the next few months and years in order to reposition ourselves really as the leading global organisation for young leaders around the world. First of all, regarding our activities at JCI headquarters since the 1st of January, we've been focusing on two polls. The first has been to readapt the organisation of uh, headquarters team to be able to adapt to the new tagline. As you know, the former tagline, uh, Global Leadership of Active Citizens, focused more on positive change at all costs in our mission. It was all about uh, using the members' skills and talents to help JCI to create positive change. We're still going to maintain the focus on positive change. However, the new tagline, Developing Leaders for a Changing World, will enable us to focus more on developing different opportunities for you, our members. So JCI will focus on helping you uh, to amplify your leadership skills and recruiting young, talented people whose leadership we can am skills we can amplify through the projects linked around the four areas of opportunity, business and entrepreneurship, individual development, international cooperation, and the community in order to in order to create better leaders for the future. And in a few years, our members can join, can join uh, the government. I know that uh, several of you are in prominent government positions. Some of you can become business leaders, others can become community or civil society leaders, and then we can change the world. Um, JCI is not a humanitarian organization, which is why we will no longer focus just on community projects. So this is a new mindset we are instilling amongst our team at JCI headquarters, and which is all about making our members on the ground feel special because it's you, the members on the ground, who are, are taking part in projects and initiating great ideas, which is even more the case now, who create the sustainable impact every day. The second point we're working on is... Uh, implementing the 2019 to 2023 strategic plan, which is all about accelerating transformation within the organization, reviewing events, reviewing the way we recruit new members and finding out of the box solutions. It's working on a brand new member centric website, which will able, enable you to network in for both business and projects and twinnings around the world more interactivity, less top-down advocacy campaigns, but getting ideas from you on the members in your local communities in Finland or elsewhere to be able to do things that are relevant to you. And actually, this current situation of crisis where we'll, we're all in lockdown has actually actually helped us to accelerate our transformation we're dealing with crisis management, but we are maintaining a very, very strong focus on our strategic goals. And uh, and uh, this is actually accelerating the implementation and the work on, on our new website, on e-learning, making us possibly revisit events like award ceremonies or conference assemblies in order to be able to develop new skills. And I know that you on the ground are doing the same at JCI Finland. You're leading by example through an innovation. And uh, it's also helping our leaders, our members on the ground grow as well as leaders to be able to uh, adapt to this changing world right now. So this uh, crisis should actually be seen as a way to, uh, despite its health and psychological in in implications, we need to be positive and stay positive and um, turn these challenges and negatives into actual positives 
and opportunities to grow in the future, both individually as leaders, but also collectively as a group of leaders who can change the world in the future. Now, the next point I want to raise is how can JCI be relevant today amidst this crisis? It's an unprecedented issue at three levels. First of all, the health implications. There's also, there are also psychological and mental health issues, mainly the uncertainty, the fear, and the um, stress of being in a confined environment for one or two months or however long it will be. And finally, the economic consequences. Right now, we're not looking just at a recession which is coming up. We're looking at a fully blown economic depression, which may last uh, two or three years, just like in 1929. We're looking at that kind of scale right now. And um, obviously, large companies like airlines or uh, vital transport links will be bailed out by governments. But what we need to focus on is the factors that touch uh, the factors that touch us, our members, in particular, those of you who own and manage small businesses. I know that several of you, that uh, hundreds of you are already touched by this crisis uh, and being put out of business. And uh, we, at a global, as a global organization, I would suggest that we must focus on the economic side and long-term sustainable solutions in order to uh, help support our members and also the small businesses which are pillars of the community. Now, governments, in terms of free sectors of society, first of all, governments have been very supportive in some countries, like in Finland, in Europe, they've been... Um, even in Monaco, there have been lots of measures to support small businesses. In Australia, for example, the state of Queensland has created 50 support for 50 mentors to help startups and also delivering financial workshops with an emphasis on local business communities. So that's already a great support. Businesses have also been supporting other businesses with the... Um, with solidarity and corporate social responsibility. For example, some companies uh, in the textile industry, instead of, uh, instead of uh, creating, uh, creating uh, the normal clothes, have been maintaining employment by creating face masks or uh, hydroalcoholic hydro uh, hand gel, for example, hand sanitizer. And uh, so this is all a corporate social responsibility. Also, web designers helping small grocers to develop online stores so that uh, online sales can be made. And finally, civil society have also played their role with NGOs like the Red Cross or other charities, which have been raising funds to uh, get face masks. Um, I've had lots of questions, actually, about why JCI is not having a global campaign about it. Uh, about face masks and fundraising? Uh, the answer is simple. It's something which was uh, established by our global decision-making um, uh, body, the Executive Committee, in that we're not a charity, we're not a humanitarian organisation, we're not a Red Cross. That's a simple answer. We're not here to raise funds because we're not we're we're an organisation of young leaders who should be thought leaders and who should find sustainable solutions. The Red Cross are much more qualified to do it than we are, so we may as well pool our resources to help them and promote their activities rather than kind of rivaling them in a way that will waste our time and the time of others as well. So our role actually is to bridge the gap, and this is the topic of this year, actually, and it's totally fitting. It's bridging the gap where, where government does not uh, totally fulfil its role. We must step in. We must uh, be the organisation that links the free sectors of society by finding sustainable solutions. And we can see with a grassroots action on the ground that we can do it as a JCI, and this is redefining us in our local communities, and this in the long term will help us position ourselves with the free sectors of society and increase our credibility to find new members and to spread awareness and support and support small businesses. Because this is really, as I said before, the area which we should focus more as at a global level. Now, 
We're not going to have a huge global campaign with global projects on this front, but I re we must really, we will really be encouraging lots of uh, JCI chapters to uh, build projects supporting small businesses in the long run and promoting entrepreneurship in young people who may have lost their jobs because of this crisis. Uh, we will, however, be pooling and aggregating all the great projects. So we really re require you to send all the projects in, communicate them on social media, especially after the pandemic has passed, after the health crisis, but um, when we're rebuilding economies. And this is where we can play key roles so that members from all over the world, a member from Asuncion in Paraguay, can see what is being done in Uvascula to help the crisis and can to help rebuild businesses and maybe uh, local farmers and help and implement similar projects in Paraguay or these can be implemented elsewhere or else a member from uh, Mikali for example can learn from a project which is being done in Harare Zimbabwe in order to uh, help sustain the community in Lakhti or Mikali or in southern Finland as well. Um, so this is how we as a global organization can help relay all these projects as well and give the basic tone and give you toolkits to succeed. We must think big and long term and this is the crucial part where we as a global organization can seize this opportunity uh, to uh, ensure that it doesn't go back to business as usual. We've seen that people are getting, communities are getting more and more used to online training and uh, we we will maintain this online training in the future. People uh, have been able to realise during this period of confinement what is necessary and what is simply excess, what is essential for uh, health, well-being and, uh, and uh, business and what is not. So uh, this is where, where industries like luxury or um, unsustainable businesses will need to review themselves to survive as well. And uh, we must uh, revisit things we took for granted before, like freedom of movement, human exchanges, and appreciate them even more when we can, when we are back together again. So we must learn to be able to rethink in a sustainable manner and uh, and try to make sure that um, we can curtail the excesses of the past. We, this goes through uh, perhaps implementing the Sustainable develop, Development Goals through smart cities, responsible consumption, buying local, creating less food waste and uh, less careless mass tourism as well in some countries. And we're ho we must hope that uh, the situation opens the eyes of our population and generates more solidarity and caring in line and out with our values. And this is where JCI can lead by example using the Sustainable Development Goals. Now you'll notice um, that we talk a lot about the Sustainable Development Goals because we're in partnership with them. And um, we've been in, JCI has uh, committed to engaging with the Sustainable Development Goals. However, Let's uh, look at it pragmatically. The Sustainable Development Goals are a great tool for marketing, but we must not define our activities at JCI by only the Sustainable Development Goals. Be original and think about out of the box. Of course, we can promote the SDGs to partners, but uh, these are not what defines us, which is why we don't have SDGs on our business cards or anything like that. We've got enough history and enough pride in what we do to be able to find our own pathway, although we are supporting the United Nations in this manner. To conclude, I, I do believe that this is a great example and a great time for us as young people to start moving forward using big ideas. Big ideas may have seemed too great in the past, but we as global leaders can actually start implementing them with courage and faith in what we are doing. This downtime can create opportunities for everybody as we are creating a culture shock to reprogram our minds and to think future and to think in a positive way. We must truly aim to build a better world from the ruins left by the pandemic and re reinvent the image of JCI as an organisation that cares, but also an, 
an organization that is anchored to reality, to economic reality, to business, to entrepreneurship and to leadership. We're not a charity. I think we've, we must make that very clear. We're, we, we shouldn't aim to uh, pretend to be a charity and we, we must not just be a community organization. We must care for the communities by supporting business and entrepreneurship and leadership skills. And we hope that uh, we will develop the ethical JCI leaders of tomorrow who understand and who are masters of the four areas of opportunity. The ethical JCI leader is a man or a woman who can, um, who um, has a business mind, who is entrepreneurial, who knows numbers, who knows how to run a budget, is somebody who is self-confident, who can, who is open-minded to leadership skills, who can lead a team, who can manage a team, who can get, who can engage people to run with them. It's somebody who is internationally minded, who speaks several languages, who. Uh, who, um, even if they do not travel internationally, are intellectually curious about other cultures and are willing to learn from others and who are not just anchored in their own communities and in their own language. And finally, most importantly, it's somebody who cares about the community, somebody who... Uh, who is an ethical leader, is somebody who leads by example and who believes in solidarity and tolerance. I've basically summed up the four areas of opportunity here, but I've also summed up the values of our creed, which have guided us for 105 years in our mission, vision and values. So this is how we at JCI can continue to be relevant in the future. I would also like to say to you, JCI leaders around the world, those of you who are in positions of power as pre local or national presidents or board members, I know it's a difficult year and a difficult time, and you've got one year to lead, yes, and you, you probably had great plans, like we all did, to attend international events and to attend conferences and to network or to maybe even host uh, events uh, around the world. And unfortunately, this is not possible right now due to this crisis. But please think out of the box. Do not let this discourage you. Um, you'll be... 2020 is a new decade, heralds a new decade with new opportunities, new challenges, as we have seen. And it requires a new mindset. And this is where you will be remembered as being the leaders in this, in this special year, which is 2020, for having... Uh, not just led JCI Finland or your local chapters, but also for having led, um, led by example. And this is a year where you can really um, change your leadership skills and move on to the next level and also bring others to do it. See this as an opportunity and not a chat, just a threat or a negative. We at JCI need to inspire others and motivate others. And this is a great opportunity to do it. It's how we as a team at JCI headquarters want to lead by example as well. It's how I personally want to seize, seize this opportunity as a leader of my team to help think outside the box as well and redefine us for the next few years. Let's be positive and don't forget we're all in this together. However, I do look forward to the day where we will be back at an event where I will be able to hug you and shake your hands personally and where we can say we are all back together as well. Carry on being positive, stay safe, stay home, stay healthy and let's all be uh, solidary in these challenging times. And believe me, if we do apply this, the best is yet to come and we all are here to play our parts. Thank you very much. Enjoy your training sessions and we will see each other very soon. Bye-bye.